Uh, so welcome, Eric and Jan. Thank you for joining me today. Before we dive into the applications of 5G, would you be able to give a brief description of what 5G is and what makes it different from current technology, especially as it relates to what we would see in sports? Well, absolutely, Anna, and great to be with you today. Well, 5G is, of course, the next generation mobile technology after 4G LTE that we're all enjoying today in smartphones. It means uh, it's going to be more capable for video viewing, more, more data speeds and, and uh, higher performance in general. So from that point of view, it's just the next generation. But it also comes with capabilities that makes it so suitable also to transform the way enterprises, companies, industries, and what sports you know, actually is performed. Because it has these capabilities that the mass market consumer devices will drive into scale uh, around the world and where other industries, enterprises, and other arenas can leverage that and, and use it for their purposes. So what we are seeing now is very much that those capabilities, mass market uh, reach as well as low latency, high performance, long battery time, all of those things make it perfect for IoT and for video, augmented virtual reality and so forth. That's incredible. Um, I know you guys have some examples of how 5G has been used in other markets as well, such as cinema, gaming, um, and music. Um, Jan, since you're the head of the D15 Innovation Lab out in Santa Clara, um, would you mind sharing some of those examples? Yeah, I can mention, for example, the music. Uh, one thing that is great with 5G and the low latency is that you get no, no jitter, no delay. So we, we have already tested several years ago to have bands playing together over the 5G network on remote places uh, with Clara in Brazil. We had even a, a, the lead violinist showing up uh, as, a, as a hologram uh, playing with the orchestra in the, in the room. So, um, and of course, with gaming, um, we see um, several use cases of, with using, uh, using 5G to, to do more advanced games over the internet uh, and even connecting it to the real games. We have an example of drone racing, which is a big sport and has a big online followers. So putting cameras on drones and having the audience following the actual driver or the actual drone as it flies around it's a, some great examples on how we how we can um, uh, develop the sport and sort of develop the experience of, 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 for the audience. From the perspective of um, an event organizer, why make the change to 5G? What makes it beneficial and why do it now? Oh, it's a good time now. Uh, technology has matured, as I mentioned. It's it's actually picking up uh, very strong numbers when it comes to 5G subscriptions in the coming five years. By 2026, we will have we will already have 3.5 billion 5G subscriptions. So it's a very fast growing ecosystem, and those uh, uh, organizers and and uh, the owners of the venues they actually uh, need to think about how to cover uh, sports for where you have capacity hungry applications when you want to have multiple views you have um, the need of the the 4k video and beyond all of those things will drive the need to upgrade or build new uh, network capabilities in the stadiums in the venues and and 5g now actually has the capability to serve all those needs so of course uh, it provides a performance uh, enhancements over any unlicensed wi-fi technology and if you compare to 4g it's actually very fit to these kind of massive uh, events because it has uh, uh, the capacity in the, the technology, the, uh, the products themselves, but also that we are actually allocating now new 5G spectrum that will come very handy in these stadiums, in these venues, so that you can actually uh, support it. You talk about the deployment of 5G over the next five, six years. Are you observing a higher demand uh, for some specific 5G applications or for 5G in different geographical regions? over others? I think we could take the Korean example because they were uh, very early in uh, rolling out 5G and they've already reached more than 95% population coverage, which is kind of fantastic growth there. Uh, if you look at uh, the difference in terms of data consumption for uh, an advanced users using their 4G smartphone and their 5G smartphone, that's of course a lot of video consumption, a lot of gaming and other things, it's a, it's a mix of that. It, it is um, more than doubled. So, so, so those kind of numbers indicate that 
um, there is a lot more that you get out of, of a 5G system in the consumer space. And in that market, we've also seen great bundles where consumers can enjoy an augmented virtual reality companion device to the smartphone as they buy their 5G subscription. And that also could be for gaming or <clears throat> media entertainment. That really shows that there is a hunger to, to move beyond just uh, watching the smartphone. So in the consumer space, and we do consumer research all around the world, we actually see uh, a very big interest in terms of moving to 5G services. Hmm. And as we move more towards a widespread utilization of 5G, what are some of the biggest hurdles you've seen or expect to see um, as we get there? We see that um, industries, enterprises, perhaps even in the sports side, uh, there is a, an important shift to, to think 5G first. So there needs to be investments in 5G infrastructure in the enterprise space, in the industries, but also in the arenas and venues. And that I think uh, comes with the realization that this is the mainstream technology and you need to do a little bit of work yourself because the applications that we're talking about now, for example, in sports, the devices and the applications, they don't exist from the start, so to say. They, they will be developed based on the fact that there is 5G in a venue or there is 5G uh, in a training stadium where, where, where the athletes are, are practicing. And, and, and all of that is an ecosystem that will be fueled by uh, sort of forward-leaning, forward-looking investments, as well as working with partnerships, such as what we're doing in our D15 lab in, in Santa Clara in California, really opening up the lab so we can have this co-creation and innovation. That will sort of overcome this hurdle. But, but it is a change in, in, um, in how you think about uh, the network. Mm. So then looking forward, what are the biggest areas of focus um, in the next five or so years for the deployment, um, maybe particularly as it relates to sports? Well, it will be rolled out in wide areas, but it will also be rolled out in, in stadiums. Uh, I have no doubt about that. At the same time, uh, some of these use cases, gamification of sports and other things, they will require even more thoughtful investments in infrastructure, edge clouds to be able to, to run applications uh, at the stadium or close to, to the, um, the users. But, but these are, are things that are, are just uh, opening up new opportunities, as I said. So, so here we can take some, uh, maybe some other examples, Jan, from, from the work that we are doing in terms of how, uh, uh, well, the, the work in, in sports in general is actually also helping us to develop the networks. Yeah, I mean, uh, sports is a great is a great um, use case to sort of push the limit of of uh, the network as well. Short, rapid movement. You want feedback, etc. So uh, one example is in gamification we did with uh, squash. Um, so put an overlay of, of digital pictures on the squash court and having the players play against those digital pictures to sort of uh, develop his his or her skills. Um, so one example, um, of course, there is the whole, the, it's, I think it's the whole change, change from the, um, from the venue audience to the, um, online audience to the athlete who will use this technology in his training and practice to actually things that changes how we perform sports or how the sports is, is executed by having sort of the integration of the digital and and physical world. So I think uh, that this is a whole chain and of course the, the venue and the audience experience is coming first, but the development uh, will not stop there. Uh, well, it's so exciting to hear how 5G is going to be shaping sports in the next decade or so um, and to be a part of that right now. Um, that's Those are all the questions I have today. Um, thank you so much for your time, Eric and Jan. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Anna.